and welcome to another Experts in AI video. We're here in New York City. I'm Ben Wadecki, lead writer on AIbusiness.com, and today I'm joined by Apu Shaji, CEO and Chief Scientist at Mobius. Apu, thank you so much for joining me. How are you today? I'm doing very good, and that's a pleasure being here. Uh, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you here. So for those not in the know, can you give our audience a little outline of Mobius Labs, what you do, and how it all started? Oh, no, definitely. So, uh, so we are a computer vision company. We are based in Berlin, Germany. Uh, so uh, a little bit about me. So my background is that I started uh, my career as an academic researcher in the field of AI pretty long time back, like 10, 20 years back, essentially. Then I started my first company 10 years back, and Mobius is the third company which I'm starting. Mm -hmm. And all in the field of computer vision. For me, as an entrepreneur in computer vision, this is the most exciting time because computer vision is penetrating into businesses everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it is a, a sector like media or a sector like space ob observation, etc., we are looking at pictures and making decisions. And we cannot do that in a human level time span of attention. So we need machines to assist us. And that's the genesis of Mobius. We build this company where we build virtual eyes to power applications uh, in scale. Mm -hmm. And that's why we call this as superhuman vision. So because we can process, our machines can process millions of images in a click of a second. Um, and, and that's powering various applications around the world. Thanks, Sapu. So on that as well, you talked about the kind of it's growing and bleeding into other industries. I mean, computer vision is well documented in things like automotive for AV, but I wanted to pick up on the industry side of things for media because it's growing. And you guys are working as a specialist in this space. So what kind of applications are you seeing on the media front when it comes for, from you guys? Yeah, so for any applications in media, sort of the prime motive is that you need to get your content in front of an audience. Okay. And that requires sort of digital tools like search or recommendations. Mm -hmm. And these applications like search and uh, recommendations are the pivotal applications in these industries. And with AI power in into search and recommendations and also advanced analytics to know what your audience is interested in, you can supercharge media businesses in terms of both uh, your ROI for the content that you produce and also the time it takes for you to take a content and put it in the market mm -hmm. and the cost involved can be drastically reduced by adoption of AI. So how do I supercharge my work as a journalist? Tell me, how can I, teach me how to improve my work? Yeah, so <laughs> let's take an example of a journalist, like you're going, uh, you want to write a story and you have uh, photo journalists all around the world, you have social feeds coming in. Your biggest sort of nightmare in the current thing is that you have so much content, you don't know where to start. Yes. <laughs> so suppose you want to find a content about uh, something which happened in New York, maybe mm -hmm. let's say New York bagels, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, because I'm from Berlin and New York bagels is the best. For, like <laughs> and every time I come to a city, I want to uh, eat one of those. But how do you get that picture of New York bagels from millions of images? Mm -hmm. So AI can essentially automatically index all of your images, automatically understand that in which image there was a New York bagel or not and find you the right one. Also, it allows you to prioritize. For example, certain bagel images is very fit for press. Mm -hmm. It can be put in a very nice article, something are pretty ordinary, you don't want to do. So AI can help you in that curation process also. Mm -hmm. And suddenly something which you would have taken half an hour, now it's like a few seconds. Mm -hmm. And that's the value that comes to you. It certainly helps my work. But one thing I wanted to kind of touch on is you mentioned about finding those images. Now, we journalists like to use a lot of stock images, right. stock photographs. We're very guilty of it because sometimes we can't be on the ground, especially in the last year, for example. Right. So how can computer vision help someone like me when I'm trying to find a stock image for content I'm working on? Yeah. The uh, Again, the challenge that you have faced is that you want to tell a story and you want to find that right image. Mm -hmm. Again, the time to write the image in a manual way is super expensive. Mm -hmm. So you are sitting on an archive of, say, 2 million stock image. But how to find that right one that matches your story? Mm -hmm. And that's where AI comes in and helps you. Like, again, uh, find me uh, New York bagels with a certain kind of uh, cream cheese uh, spread on it, for example. You're just making me hungry yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> me too, while I was talking. <laughs> so, so, Apu, I wanted to kind of take things a little bit away from the journalism side, because I'm sure not everyone here is interested in that. But 
I want to talk about deep fakes, which is a growing problem in the last five years. It's you know growing in public interest, not just in tech spaces, but in wider mainstream spaces. Right. So how can a computer vision system help detect potentially falsified images or videos? Yeah. So the interesting thing about deep fakes is the scale in which this technology can be an issue. In the mm -hmm. sense that people always use fakery. From the time visual images came, people were using fakery. So some, let's take the image of the Loch Ness monster uh, from Scotland. Some will claim it's original, but in my mind, that's a sort of a, <laughs> an, a, a fake image. But, but the thing is that we can create that kind of images in scale right now because of technologies like deep fake. Mm -hmm. So the solution to that is also using computer vision to spot deep fakes. Because mm -hmm. we as humans won't have the time or the bandwidth to go and actually do extensive forensics to find out whether an image is right or not. And the solution is also here technological, where we can have, can we have a digital AI forensic to spot uh, deep fakes. So we can use computer vision to spot whether Bigfoot's real? Mm. Probably. I mean, he is real. Let's be. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay. uh, and finally, Apu, I want to talk about the kind of labeling side of things. AI models can make mistakes. We've seen that with the the famous example where it labels a black person as a gorilla, of course. Um, especially if the data sets they are built on, you know, is is biased. Right. How are you guys at Mobius solving this issue? Yeah. So looking at the data set that we use to train is kind of uh, a really pivotal part. And for me, it's also this is the one issue which is in the intersection of both technology and social science. Um, where we have to look for really um, sort of marry these two disciplines mm -hmm. and to actually understand what is an impact that happens if we are not careful or something. Mm -hmm. So what we try to do inside Mobius technologically is we try to balance data sets. Uh, we try to look at certain characteristics in the data sets so that there is a fair representation. But at the same time, this what is fair representation has to be sort of uh, informed by the social science uh, like uh, kind of thing. I'll give an example. Like recently, we were training a, a class called uh, Body Positivity, mm -hmm. right? Like the idea about body positivity 10 years was completely different from what it is now. And that's the kind of information that we need to have to actually solve this uh, representation thing. So it should come from both sides because we have technology where we can actually go and sample body, uh, uh, body positivity, but the information or the crucial, what is an image which is a strong representation for that is something that is involved by social science. Maybe I'll give you another example. We are doing for one client to sort of sensor um, images which uh, which can find where uh, um, there is cigarette smoking or there is violence etc and if you actually look at cartoons in like 1940s and 1950s there's a huge liberal use of cigarettes and like uh, in cartoons so you will see Tom Tom and Jerry Tom uh, very happily smoking mm -hmm. and that's that information of what needs to be modeled by the AI should be informed by the other sort of current social setup essentially mm -hmm. so that's pretty hard problem challenging problem but a very relevant problem for us to solve so that's something that makes uh, sort of our work life very meaningful to think about it in this way mm -hmm. thank you so much i think next year we can expect a lot from you guys in this space but of course it's up to you guys to check out mobius in your own time but until then uh, thank you so much for your time it's been a pleasure thanks a lot ben thank you <laughs>